Hello and welcome to my tutorial on how to create a glossy style button in Adobe Illustrator. We're going to start by creating a new document. So click New Document. We're going to use a default 200 by 200 pixel document. We're just going to name this button and click OK. And we're going to go over to our ellipse tool on our toolbar over here. We're just going to either click and drag to create the button, or you can just click on the screen, and we can go 150 pixels by 150 pixels. And then we're going to center this in the document on the artboard by using these alignment tools up here. So go ahead and click on the center ones for those, vertical and horizontal. And now we've got our centered circle in the middle of our artboard. So then we're going to Alt, click, and drag down to create another circle. And I want to give this a light blue color. It's 100% cyan. And I'm going to turn the stroke off on this. I'm also going to give this a black color. I'm going to turn the stroke off on that, give it that black color. And then we're going to use our pen tool over here on the toolbar. You can get to that by pressing P or just clicking on it on the toolbar. And this is a tool that I like to use for uh, creating some of my mascot illustrations, um, logos, and things like that. Um, so just click, and then... I've got the smart guides on here. This just shows me if I'm on the center of something or lined up with a point. Um, you can get to that by pressing Control U or go View or, and then Smart Guides. So we're going to click here and come down a little bit past the center of this circle. Hold Shift and drag it to the right. And that's going to give us these little handles that come out from the point. And what those are is those actually make the next point follow um, wherever we have these handles. So if you see I click down here, it kind of follows that line right away. Um, or if I click up above, it'll follow the line out that way. Um, I want to actually line this next point up with the first point we made. And then just click and it'll follow that line and it'll just be a creation of what we did before. So then I want to go down here and I just want to bring this shape to create a full kind of half circle top box thing here and then now what I did was I just created this little shape over the top of our circle that we duplicated and we're going to actually mask the front of this or use a pathfinder to get rid of the bottom portion of this circle. So to do that, go over to the right on your pathfinders here, and we're going to want to minus the front. And what that's going to do is it's going to get rid of this black box over the top of the blue circle. So go ahead and click that, and now you see we've actually gotten rid of the bottom part of that circle, and that's going to actually be our reflection. So I actually want to offset this path a little bit so that it brings an outline inside of this blue circle. So in order to achieve that, we're going to go up to Object, we're going to go Path, and we're going to Offset Path. Click our Preview, and now you see I had a 10 pixel offset in here, and it created one outside. I actually want one to be created inside instead, so we're going to go about a 3 pixel negative inside, and that you see created a little one inside. Click OK, and then just click on the circle we just created inside. Hold shift and click and drag it up. And now you see I'm dragging it right up to the point where we'd have a black outline around the circle. We can get rid of this circle in the bottom. And now what I want to do is I want to add some dimension into this blue circle we just created. And I'm going to do that by adding a gradient. So select your gradient on the right side. And this was a default that was set up for um, the last gradient I used. So I'm going to add some white in here. Click and drag and bring them down to this 
little boxes down here. And now it just creates kind of a, just a plain white um, shape here because I don't have any variation in color in the gradient bar. So I'm going to actually change the opacity to one of these and I'm going to bring it all the way down to zero. And now you can see the black is coming through on the gradient. If I would have just left that, um, a default in the Illustrator is white to black gradient. So if I would just leave that white to black or whatever color, um, you wouldn't be able to see that black through um, the background. You would just see, um, if I selected this and just made it a red color, you can see the red through there. But if I would have left this gradient uh, white to black, it would just actually be a black over in here. I can show you that. And we'll just knock the opacity back up. Now you can see it's just black, but we don't want that. So we're just going to put the white back in, drag our opacity back down to zero. And now you see we've got kind of this left to right gradient. We're going to want to make that actually top to bottom. So we're going to go 90 degrees. And now you can see we've got kind of our, ref our reflection happening up in here. And I'm going to want to add some dimension to this red circle here because it looks kind of flat and doesn't really look much like a glossy gel button. So we're going to actually take this, click our bar over here again for our gradient, and now you see it just went to our past gradient that we had. So we're going to drag some red in here, drag this back up to 100% so you can't see through it. In this color, we're going to use our maroon, drag that down in there, we're going to drag this over a little bit, and then we're going to hold Alt, and then click on this box, and drag it over to the right, and that will actually create another swatch. And I double-click that, and I'm going to add a lot of black in here just to give it some dimension. So let's go like 70% black. Now you see it's a left-to-right gradient. Um, I want it to be a radial gradient so that it brings that red all the way from the inside to the dark red on the outside. So let's select radial. And now you see that I've got this kind of gel looking button. I can move these around to just kind of get rid of this hard line on the outside. You see right here this line. You can actually kind of see that gradient more of a crisp edge. I don't really want that so I'm just going to drag it around like that. Uh, I can mess with these a little too. Make sure you have the circle selected. So we're going to run with something right about in there. Let me mess with these a little. There we go. Now what I want you to do is I want to create a drop shadow to kind of pop this off the page. So we're going to go up here in the menu, click Effect, and then we're going to go Stylize, Drop Shadow, Click your preview so you can see what's happening. And now this shadow actually looks pretty good. Um, you can mess with the opacity. This is just how dark the shadow is in here. Uh, two pixels offset is actually if you want to offset the x-axis left to right, uh, the y-axis up and down. Um, blur it. You can actually set how much you want it blurred and that will actually blur it quite a bit if you can bring it way up there. But we just want to go probably about double of our offset just to have a nice uniform shadow. Now I want to kind of give this a little dimension down in the bottom here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab our ellipse tool again. I'm just going to drag a little ellipse towards the bottom here. And now you see it has that little gradient in it. But what I want to do is I want to give it kind of this dark maroon color that we had before. So I want to go Actually, you know what, let's go a light red. So we'll just go red down in the bottom here to give it kind of a reflection at the bottom. And then what I'm going to do is I want you to click Effect. And then we're going to go Blur, Gaussian Blur. Click the minus here so you can see what's going on. This is actually just going to say how crisp the edges are if you want it really blurred or not blurred so much. I just want a nice, subtle blur in the bottom, so we probably go about 10 pixels. You see how that kind of blends in with the bottom. So 
right there we have our glossy style button in Adobe Illustrator. Thanks for watching and please feel free to watch some of my other tutorials and have a great day.